In this video, we look at some examples of applying the process capability ratio. The first question aims to understand how we can adjust the process capability ratio. Imagine that our current capability ratio for a key quality variable is 1.3. The average value of the quality variable being measured was 64 units, and we are told the process operates closer to the lower specification limit, which is 56. The upper specification limit is 93. Which two parameters in the system can we adjust, and by how much, to achieve a desired capability ratio of 1.67? For example, recent safety regulations might just have been put in place, and we need to improve our capability. In the answer where you are specifying these two parameters, assume that you can adjust those parameters independently of each other. The answer will be shown on the screen in a few seconds. The second example shows values of the particle size, a key critical quality value, taken from their certificates of analysis. Certificates of analysis are a piece of paper that specify what the upper and lower specification limits are for a product that you are purchasing or for a product that you are selling. When you are selling the product, you supply the certificate of analysis to your customer. When you are purchasing, you will receive the certificate of analysis from the supplier. Download these data from this link of 20 recent shipments from a supplier and calculate what the supplier's capability ratio is, given that on their certificate of analysis, it shows the lower specification limit was 45 microns and that the upper specification limit was 59 microns. When you do your calculation, clearly state all the assumptions that you need to make. The answer will be shown on the screen in a few seconds. Here is a final example. Plastic sheets are manufactured on your blown film line. The CP value, in other words the capability ratio assuming your process is centered, is given as 1.7. You sell these plastic sheets to your customers with a specification limit of 2 mm plus and minus 0.4. Can you list three important assumptions you must make to interpret the CP value? Here they are written for you on the screen. Answer the following next. What is the theoretical process standard deviation sigma for this system? Answer the following question next. What would be the Schuart's chart limits for this system if you had used subgroups of size n equals 4? To answer this last question, I strongly suggest you draw an illustration on a piece of paper, showing where the specification limits are and showing where the Schuart's chart limits are. Draw this with a diagram of the normal distribution superimposed. If you followed that advice, you would have had a generic diagram that looked as follows. Notice that the lower specification limits fall below the lower control limits. And similarly, the upper spec limit falls above the upper control limits. Notice where sigma for the process lie and where sigma over root n, the value that's used to calculate the control limits, lie relative to each other. Given this, you can then calculate the upper and lower control limits as shown here on the screen.